Greyhound racing nights do not get any better than this. It's Melbourne Cup night at Sandown Park on Friday night. And with the Melbourne Cup worth over $600,000, the bold trees at Group 1 level worth over $150,000. We are in for a treat. We're now previewing the bold trees and I'm joined by Mick Floyd and Jason Adams once again. Mick, hello to you. Hello, James. Jace, big one, the stayers. Uh, a lot of people love staying racing. They find a position early and they just race for the glory. And we've got a great... Uh, addition ahead of us too, the bowl trees, of course, with Rip and Sam and Tornado Tears out. Yeah. It's really opened it up and we've got a really open field this Friday night. Mick, what do you think about the bowl trees? There's been some champs that have won this race and I think there'll only be another added to the long list on Friday. There certainly is. As Jason mentioned, this opens it up for a few other contenders now. And I think after those heats, I think we've narrowed it down to a race in two. The star Victorian, Bacali, and the New South Wales Raider, Poco Dorado, both very yeah. impressive in their heats. It, it does seem that way. We'll have a look at the market and the box draw now from box one, Black in Parlour, $7.00. 50. Ebby Ripper, well it wouldn't be a group final without Ebby Ripper. This is around about her 20th. She's at $7.50. Uh, $2.50 for Bacali. He's the joint favourite now with Poco Dorado as we see in 7. Beckham's at $12. Hot Tip 41. Kanzan at 26 and Soda Flashbox number 8 at $12. Now of the heats, we saw four great heats on Friday gone, the top two making it through. We'll go run a, a heat by heat, starting off with the first of those. Soda Flash, he jumped from box number one and he was pretty impressive. Yeah, I think that was a key to him too, uh, finding that uh, early lead. And uh, the question I have for him on Friday night is uh, just how he backs up after that run. And drawing box eight isn't going to help him at all. Uh, but it was a very impressive run. He has got plenty of talent. Uh, 4180, if he can repeat that, then uh, he's going to be thereabouts. Did that run surprise you a little bit, Jace, just how strong he was? Because he had a couple of runs here at sand down and he hadn't been able to win and then to come out and run 4180 I thought it was pretty impressive. I think so as well he stepped up in distance at the Meadows earlier in his campaign mm. and look he won but he didn't win him he didn't win in fast time yeah. and yeah I was surprised to see him uh, not win but winning the time that he did I didn't think at this stage he was capable of that but obviously he is and he'll be hoping to repeat it this Friday. I thought the uh, the second heat was the run of the night Bacali or the run of the stayers at least it was just a tremendous effort we saw it on the head-on footage going through the first corner he actually got a decent hip and shoulder and had to pull back to then find the rails exploded through he still went 41.63 he gets cleared running from box number three Mick I reckon he can go about 41.45 if he runs that oh he's going to be hard to beat. I think so he's uh, I think if you can repeat that 41.60 he's going to be the one to beat uh, he should get a clear run now we're yeah. seeing he can run uh, fast times. This isn't a one-off for him. He has done that previously. And from that box draw, he should get that clear run early. He's certainly uh, on top of mine. Third of the bold trees heats went the way of Poco Dorado. Took a long time to find clear running, did she? But when she got clear Poco Dorado, she just showed that she is all class. All class, exactly right, Jim. And look, she's used to leading a lot of her races, especially New South Wales. But to see her uh, not lead last Friday night and be able to work hard and and still win the race in good time, I thought was very impressive. Poco Dorado swept to the front and dashed away. Raced out by 40 Yankees Ethics and then hot tip, but it's all Poco Dorado and the Sydney Stars go to bolt home a big winner. Final of the Bold Trees heats went to, went to Black in Parlour. I know you're a big fan, Jace. He just kept going in front. And Mick, it must have been a little bit of a surprise just to see him really fight for that win in 41.89. Yeah, absolutely. He's, uh, of course, coming off a Group 1 win at the Meadows. And uh, first up up to 700, it, it often uh, helps him get out a little bit earlier. And uh, the strength at the end of these races is probably the biggest surprise and most pleasing for connections. Uh, the question on, on how he backs up the second time over 700 is the big one going forward. But having a box one, it's always an advantage in every race, especially in a Group 1 race. You would expect him to lead. Let's get straight into selections now for the Group 1 Bold Trees. Mick, we'll start off with you. Yeah, my selections are 3, 7, 2 and 5. I think Bacali is the one to beat. He is a very fast greyhound. Uh, as we know, he's got a good smarts about him now and should get a charmed run from the draw. Poco Dorado for second. Uh, she is going very well. She's undefeated over the half mile in, in New South Wales and that was a very impressive performance last time out. Uh, I've gone every ripper. You can't leave her out of these races. Uh, I think it's about a 25th, in fact, at group of listed yeah, level, which is an extraordinary performance yep. and I've thrown in hot tip I think he'll be uh, fine doing his best work late. Jace? Yeah I've gone three seven one and two three on top of Carly and look I do think he's much better drawn this week than what he was last week and if he is to find the fence as mm. James mentioned he will go fast but he's got one concern and I think it's Black Impala shifting off the track so he's got to avoid him in the early stages. Second number seven Poco Dorado look she's a star New South Wales stayer I think she's probably got as much of as ability as Bacali um, just going with Bacali because of the better draw. Yeah. Third number one, Black Empire. As I said, he will begin well. He will lead. Whether he can run out the trip, I think he may. But we'll see how we go. And fourth number two, Ebby Ripper. As you guys have said, you can't leave her out. She's been in so many.
many group race finals and no doubt we'll be running on well late in the race. I'm the villain here. I'm playing as the villain. I'm leaving her out, every Ripper. I'm going three, seven, four and five. Tipping Bacali on top. Look, he's going to get the charm run. I think he'll follow Black in Parley. He'll strike the leader lap to go. I think he'll be too good for seven. Poco Dorado. I've gone the four for third Beckham. I thought it was a pretty nice type of staying debut in the heat. And I've gone for four, the five, hot tip. And like you, Mick, I think the, uh, the Bolter can run a pretty big race. Well, it's going to be an unbelievable night of Greyhound racing. The Melbourne Cup, the Bold Trees, and add to that, Mick, there's so much happening off the track as there well. There is. It's free entry. Someone will have a chance to spin for a million dollars on the Sandown Super Wheel. Stacks of free fun and entertainment and giveaways throughout the entire night. It is Greyhound Racing's night of night, the very best our sport has to offer, so make sure you get along to the track and be part of the fun. It really is going to be an unbelievable night. They're striving for greatness, the Greyhounds, and so are we, the punters, get to Sandown Park for a memorable night on Friday night.